Todd Dubkowski with the RL Defend Company. We're a manufacturer's rep for Bell & Gossett here in Michigan and Northern Ohio. And today we're going to talk about expansion tanks and air elimination systems. So let's talk about expansion tanks. In previous Monday Morning Minute presentations, we have discussed tanks and systems, but today we will focus on expansion tanks in air elimination hydronic systems. In an air elimination system, we use a bladder or diaphragm tank which has a physical barrier between the water and the air, and as the water is heated, the tank membrane or balloon expands. Since we are not channeling any air in the system piping back to the tank, it can be mounted on the floor. Any air in the piping will be purged to the atmosphere through air vents. The expansion tank will be smaller than a standard tank for the same size system, but also more expensive. The Bell & Gossett HFT diaphragm tanks are designed for hydronic heating systems and range in size from 2 gallons to 86 gallons. The diaphragm is made of heavy-duty butyl rubber. These are non-ASME rated tanks. The Bell & Gossett D tanks are ASME rated. Like the HFT, the, the D tanks have a heavy-duty butyl membrane, pricing is lower than a replaceable bladder, but requires you to remove the tank if there is damage to it. Diaphragm tanks can be mounted vertically or horizontally. The Bell & Gossett B-style bladder tank is a full acceptance bladder, meaning if there is any loss of air in the tank, the bladder would be able to accept the full tank volume without damage to the bladder itself. The B-style tanks are ASME rated. If the bladder is compromised, it can be replaced. Full acceptance bladder tanks can be mounted vertically or horizontally. The B low acceptance style tanks are ASME rated like the B tanks, but are not able to accept the full tank volume. Low acceptance tanks can only be mounted vertically. When possible, always charge a bladder or diaphragm tank when there is no water in the system. When replacing a tank in a current system or if you need to adjust the pressure in an existing tank, you will need to isolate the tank before charging. Here is a diagram showing a vertical installation. The tank is mounted on a housekeeping pad on the floor with a pressure gauge, air vent, drain and isolation valve. It is very important to have an isolation valve to separate the tank from the system so it can be charged, drained, or replaced without having to drain the entire system. Notice the piping at the top of the tank goes down to almost to the floor and then back up before connecting to the system. This is a thermal loop to prevent circulation, gravity circulation of the hot water into the tank. The tank should always be piped in before the suction side of the pump to avoid pumping into the tank. These tanks can also be mounted in a horizontal fashion as you see here. When it comes to pricing levels, you can save a little money by choosing a low acceptance tank versus a full acceptance tank, but you will not save any space since they are physically the same size tank. In this case, you are better off going with a diaphragm tank. Check back next week when we review selecting tanks with our Bell & Gossett SystemWise program. This concludes our segment on expansion tanks and air elimination systems. We appreciate your business and specification of our products. Thank you for watching.